I think you might have actually benefited from going to the hospital. And then somebody commented and said, oh, I remember PDI in them. <laughs> but Dad said they were crock of crap. Is it right that you pop them in the ground and they turn into many potatoes just like that? Did Mrs. Farmer used to be rich and then she gave it all up to be with you? Yeah, she did, yeah. I don't know that I can put that on here. Yeah, I thought you put it on there, <laughs> didn't you? So. Did you say wet rain? The funniest question I think we've ever been asked. I'm sorry, we found the jackets first and yep. then the chip. Oh, look at that. Hey Fenlanders, how are you? I'm Anna, welcome to Fenland Farm Adventures. Hello. This is Daniel. Anna's taking over from me now, I'm retiring. Woo woo! Yeah. I'm way prettier anyway. The farmer in making. <laughs> well, yeah, because, I, because I, I just pulled one little lever on the, on the, in the tractor. Woo, yeah. I feel like I'm a farmer now, it's good. You're a pro. So we asked you guys yesterday on Instagram if you have any questions regarding potato planting. And obviously, since you've been planting, you've had loads of questions, haven't you? Yeah. And I know you obviously answer all the comments as you go, but we thought we'd just do a little video on it. So. Yeah, um, forgive me for not being uh, as thorough as I should have been. People wanting to know what different machines do on the on the in the process of planting, really. So we're going to go through it. Woo! Let's Teach go. How, put the put the potatoes in the right way up. <laughs> and we've got some really silly questions for you guys. One of them being from uh, our lovely cousin Ben, which is it's quite a hilarious question, isn't it? Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> so, why Daniel is just backing out the tractor and the planter, so we can talk about it in the sunshine, it'll be much nicer out here. I thought I would just let you guys know that we have added all of our discount codes in the link um, in our description. So if you ever wanna look out any, any of our discount codes, they are there. One of them being the amazing Smart Farmer app, which we love. It's all about health and safety and your machinery on the farm. So I won't go into too much detail. I'll let you guys check out the link in the description. And also there is our discount code for an, an annual subscription as well. We absolutely love the app and Daniel doesn't know how he'd work without it now because it's just it just keeps us on track with our health and safety. So yeah, go check it out. Hey, hey. How are you feeling? No, I've got a concussion. I think you might have actually benefited from going to the hospital. Maybe, I'm going to the chiropractor in a minute. Feels like my head's more potato shaped than it was before. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, I got up in the Indian after having a nice lovely start to our meal with Adam Palmer on Saturday <laughs> night and uh, cracked my head on the roof beam. Oh no. And then that was it, that was game over. Me feeling properly sick and you know, me soldiering on. I had two more days of drinking after that. So. <laughs> I don't know if it was the hit in the head thing that was oh, uh, the issue. Yeah, so forgive me, I haven't been doing much filming. It's now Thursday and the last filming I've done was Thursday last week, so it's been a week. I've had a week off, so. Woo woo, ready to roll. Yeah. We did actually do a little Instagram bank holiday, a little bit of a fun thing with um, just asking questions on Instagram. Obviously you answered all of them, but I thought it'd be fun to answer them here as well, so. Gordon Cromwell said, did you ever have any other make of tractor apart from John Deere? Yeah, yeah, we were, when I was a kid, Dad um, kind of scavenged anything he could get hold of. So, well, as a kid, we had some Masseys floating around, 590s and 595s, which I said about in a few videos ago. Yeah. In some of our previous videos. And then somebody commented and said, oh, I remember PDI in them. <laughs> so they would have been 10, 15 years old when Dad would have bought them. We had some Landinis. A Landini? Yeah. That sounds like... Uh, that sounds like uh, yeah, I was going to say that. sounds like some sort yeah, of supercar. Yeah, I think they were Landinis. That's, yeah, Landinis is what they were called. We had some of them. We had some counties. But Dad said they were a crock of crap. So <laughs> Dad was like, don't ever buy one of them. And then when, when them uh, counties, 1195s or whatever they were, 1194s were making £150,000. Yeah. Dad was like... Dang it. <laughs> no, not dang it, but no, he said I can't see what people see in that, in that shite. <laughs> Um, but there you go, um, yeah. and then we've had Case, we had Case right up until one exploded on us. What happened there? One exploded? It, it, we just got a dog, I think. Because there's lots of people, some, a lot of my friends have got the 5150s and 5140s that yeah. we had. We just got a pup, I think. We just got a dog. Right. And uh, it had a head gasket on it, and then it had a back end on it. Yeah. Once the head, then it wanted the brakes doing on it as well. Once that came to that, Dad sold it. Yeah. And that was when we bought our first John Deere, which is actually just around there. Which you, you always say that you wish you'd bought more of these, don't you? Yeah, we did have we did have a complete set. We had a six two and a six four, so the, both the baby baby ones we had. Yeah. So that's our very first John Deere on farm. 
And am I thinking rightly that there is also a David Brown around the corner? Yeah, there's David Brown, 996 yeah. around the corner there. That was, um, that's a good little tractor. Was a good little tractor, but at the minute it's got no engine in it. So yeah, we've, we've gone from everything from Alice's to David Brown's to Case to Massey to now we've stuck with John Deere. Um, yeah. They look after us, so it's all about backup, isn't it? These things still go wrong like anything else does, but when, you, when you're broken down and they come out and fix it straight away, you can't fault them, can you? No. So, um, that leads us nicely on to the next question. Justin John. said, what's so popular about John Deere? I very rarely see any <clears> other make. They just keep going. 99% of the time, they just keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, you do get the old one that just uh, keep beeping at you for like weird reasons, but I just want a tractor that will keep going. Yeah. And, and John Deere's too. That thing's there done like 13,000 hours. We've just had, it's just had a diesel pump on it. Yeah. And the same with the 6610, 13,000 hours on them. And the only thing we've had to do is the diesel pump because they're the new style diesel, you know. It's, it's eating the seals on them and they don't beep at you and they don't tell you they're tired or anything like that. These new ones can be a bit temperamental sometimes, but we haven't had any major problems with them. I mean, our 6630 had a few CAN bus problems. Every now and again, it would tell you it was broken and it wasn't. So that's just for instance. But otherwise, they're... Yeah, touch wood, I don't want to tap my head too hard. <laughs> yeah, touch wood, they're all good, so... You already did that the other night in the Yeah, evening. I already done that. Yeah, Adam Palmer, every time I put it on Facebook that I bashed my head, Adam Palmer's laughing his head off. So I think we all knew the answer to this question anyway, but Ian Roberts put, what's your favourite job you like doing? I knew this anyway. Yeah, 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 just sitting on the combine. Yeah. In the middle of the summertime with air conditioning on. We did have half a year where the air conditioning wasn't working on the combine, so it was a full Turkish prison. <laughs> The Albanian prison. I don't know that I can put that on here. Yeah, we top put it on their <laughs> thing, didn't we? So, uh, full Clarkson, shall we say. And, oh my God, it's unbelievable. You just, you can't sit in the cab for no more than like 15 minutes. Really. Is it, because because it's so dusty, if the aircon's not working, it's like being in a car without the windows open, like if you're just in a parking space. Do you know what I mean? There's full suns on it. Yeah, yeah, when That's, it's 30, 35 degrees yeah. outside and you're surrounded by glass, it's like sitting in a greenhouse and... Yeah. <laughs> Get your oil, get a good suntan. It's all good. Oh, uh, yeah, no, you don't, you don't, you can't get the sun on you because there's bloody roof oh. over your head. But no, it just it fries you. So, yeah, we had, we had one season there where for, for a few hours the air conditioning weren't working, but they came out and sorted that. So, Georgie Boy put New Holland than John Deere, which again, you did already answer that we've never actually had a New Holland. No. So, you can't really kind of comment on it, can you? But, you know, obviously we're open. We've, we've had lots of different brands, or, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the only thing, like my dears, like when you look out the back of them, the mud guards don't seem that big. When you're in the New Holland, I mean, we was in Beardy's New Holland the other day, weren't we? Yeah. The 300 that's not a 300. Yeah. And uh, that didn't seem too bad, but some of the old T7, 270s and stuff, like the mud guards feel like they come right back here. Right. So you kind of like, you, you feel a bit like enclosed, if that makes sense. But then it's a bigger tractor than that anyway, so. Like you're riding a Suffolk punch. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Forestry Man put, if money wasn't an issue, what would you buy and what would you change on the farm? I think I'd like my own pig unit. Yep. Like, free range pigs on 10 acres of land, but with a barn that they could come back in at night. So pigs pump out the best fertiliser money can get. So, yeah, I'd probably have a few thousand pigs dotted around. Yeah. And then, yeah, if I had endless count amounts of money then... We just buy loads of fields. James Hopkins said, if you didn't have John Deere tractors, what tractors would you have? You, you've already said what we have had, but I think, did you say if you could, you'd have a fast track? Yeah, I think probably I would have a fast track. It's just a money side of things with the fast track, really. Lots of people get on all right with them. I mean, Mrs. Farmer used to have, did she have nine or ten of them? Nine. So, um, yeah, they had loads of fast tracks. and. Did Mrs. Farmer used to be rich and then she gave it all up to be with you? <laughs> yeah, she did, yeah. Do I need to have a chat with her? Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, she's better off now, isn't she? So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, so it's a shame she couldn't bring a couple of her fast tracks with her. <laughs> they borrow they, they kind of came with the X, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, a fast track, like New Holland's are not really English, um, but they are built in England. Yeah, maybe New Holland, maybe, it, I mean, David Waters gets on fine with all their new hollands they don't have too many problems i think anything you buy these days i think you're just unlucky to get a, a rough one you know right one yeah. that's not put together properly yeah um otherwise i think everything reasonably as reliable as everything else john mosley asked is the rain helping with seeding with 
seeding? Uh, it's helping with my seeding because my seeding's all done. Where we're normally rushing around trying to get irrigators ready, I haven't got any worries about that for another three weeks at least. If the sun come out now, which it hasn't really come out, is it? It's cloudy here today, but muggy as anything. Yeah. Uh, and then more rain forecast tonight. The birds are being really noisy. Yeah, I know. Like it's it's a... lovely to hear them, but also we've got the birds. I don't even, I can't uh, even say the... that's the sound of freedom. There's a plane going over somewhere. I can't see it, can you? It's coming through the clouds. It'll come through here in a minute. Where's it gone? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Going? Yeah, just. Just gone behind the clouds again. Yeah, that was quite a big one. Yeah, it's unusual for, normally we don't get too many um, passenger airliners going over us because they're not allowed. Um, obviously with Lake Eve there, but you can't fly a passenger jet over a military base. People might get waspy. Yeah. The rain, the rain's lovely. A nice, warm, wet rain at the minute, it seems. So that couldn't be any more perfect for us. Um, we'll go and have a look at the potatoes in a minute, and they are rooting down like mad. And basically, it's putting their roots out. They've got lovely, moist soil, and the, the moisture helps the nematorin work as well, the chemical that we put on. It's all good. As soon as they poke through, I like to chuck a load of water on, but this year I'm not going to need to. Did he say wet rain? Wet uh, rain, yeah. Did I say wet did rain? Did you say wet rain? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Well, Grumpy Grandad's going to take over for me because I've got concussion. As opposed to dry rain. As opposed to dry rain. Oh, it's that dry rain. Nobody likes it. It's a mess. Um, so, Dad, you can answer this. What's the best land to grow spuds on, white or black fen? That's what Damien Wall asked. Come closer, Dad. Come on, Dad. It, it, it's whatever you've got in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people, some, some of our customers... Yeah, they're both good in different ways. Some of our customers prefer either or, don't they? It's, uh, ours is good, uh, it's, it's late land, so it's good for main crops. It's not uh, good for early. Early crops, probably... Uh, sandy land. Sandy, sandy land. And if you're growing Soak salad the and stuff, so they yeah. get warm quicker. Oh. One at a time, one at a time, people. Do you have to treat the land differently when you're planting closer to the farm or when you're planting over a hot world? Uh, not really, no, we are trying to, I mean, you could get away just about with one in four years or one in five years, I think, on our soils, but then no point, we'd, um... Well, you but, just, you'd yeah. just fill it up with uh, nematodes. Yeah, just fill it up with nematodes, so mm -hmm. you end up with, um... You'll end up with no crop. Yeah, problems down the line. I think this can be quite, um, obviously subjective to what you want, but someone's asked what's better, three rows or two rows in a bed? Three row you can get away with on the sandier lands, but uh, on this land is too damp. Uh, we've tried tried it and it doesn't work. Uh, people up the road, they're all three rows. I don't know, I haven't spoken to him lately to see how he got on the last couple of years. Right. I think, I think they rows. struggle They struggle with blight pressure. The bed lays wet. It's tough to dry out because you've, uh, if on a wet year, they're lifting a lot of soil. If you're on heavy land and stuff, you just cannot, you just cannot shake the dirt out. As where us, we're lifting two rows of potatoes they're lifting three rows of extra row in the middle. Yeah. And they've got all that associated soil with that extra row. Yeah. So they just can't shake the dirt out of the web. Uh -oh. Sometimes. So for you guys, two rows is better. But again, is it dependent on what, sa uh, what soil type you're yeah, on? Yeah, on soil type. Yeah. Yeah. If I could, if I could have a crystal ball and figure out what the season was going to be like, if it was going to be a season where I didn't have to irrigate, the rain came every week. We had an inch of rain once a week and soaked in for a day and then I could get my blight sprays on and no rain for a week, then I'd probably do it. But I think, I think we'd be able to shake the dirt out of the harvester with free roads for ourselves, but I don't think we'd be able to get rid of the blight pressure. That's the biggest problem with free roads. Yeah, if, we have, if we, you've got a dense canopy, haven't you? A yeah. much denser canopy. What are you doing, Dad? <laughs> this wheel's got to go down. It's got to go down to the same level when he drops it. Um, so, Tom Carr asked, have you heard of Green Seed International? No. No. Green Seed International? Yeah. No, yeah. do enlighten us, Tom. Yeah, he'll have to let us know in the comments what yeah. that is. Have you heard of that? No. No? Okay, we'll have to have Where a look at that. Where are they from? Don't know. I don't know. I haven't no. looked. He just said, have you heard of Green Seed International? Okay, so Neil Simper asked, is it right that you pop them in the ground and they turn into many potatoes just like that? I think that was a yes, joke. Fantastic, you yeah, fantastic, yeah. Does he not know that? <laughs> Simper the simpleton. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, would, um, you have to go and give them a kiss every night, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To sing and to them. You do read them a bedtime story, right? Them, yeah. yeah, I sing they to them as they're going in the ground. Yeah. yeah. I sometimes get off the planter and uh, 
let the tractor drive itself up the field. Yeah. And talk to them as they're going in. Yeah. Oh, it would be fine to mock <laughs> Neil, but he's like a bodybuilder, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. The main mountain, so. G ginger Viking. So, good question, Neil. Yeah, well done. So, Dad, you can answer this one. This is from our cousin, Ben. Uh, I think it's probably the I'm funniest. i hide up when Neil comes. <laughs> the funniest question I think we've ever been asked. So, Dad, do you have different rows for different flavours, like salt and vine vinegar next to ready salted, etc.? Let me guess who asked that. <laughs> ben. Ben, yeah. yeah. I already said that, but yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Ha yeah. Yeah, of course we do. And then we also plant, we like to start off by planting our chips first. <laughs> yeah. Then, then our, um, then our, well, no, sorry, we planted jackets first and yeah. then the chips and then the sautés. Yeah. And then uh, we go for the crisps after. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah. we have, jackets need longer, obviously, to grow. And the, and the crisps don't. Yeah. And do you read bedtime stories longer so the jacket potatoes? Yeah, do, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, thanks for clearing that one up. Shall we go out in the field and do a bit more filming out there? Yeah. Oh, actually, while we're here, while we're here, we might as well answer the questions that Dan asked about, like just talking through the planter. So while you're here, while Dad's here, we might as well answer that question, might we? When when we and you film, Dad will go. Well, that's not right. That's not right. No, yeah, he so didn't. He, he can do it himself. Now, yeah, yeah, he? Dad. Should we do it? You, you can do it because you always say that we get it wrong. So, Dad, here's the question. He said, "Could you please show and explain what the other equipment and its purpose is that you have fitted to the planter tractor and your dad's tractor beside the main machines? Also, some explanation as to what the purpose is of the chemicals that you're applying whilst clod crushing and planting. Are these herbicides or some pesticides? Many thanks, Dan." I suppose they classed as uh, they're a nematode. They get rid of the nematodes. It's granular and it gasifies and it gets, it stops the nematodes eating off the roots of the uh, potatoes as they grow. And once they get over a certain growth stage, they can handle it. Yeah. They can uh, fend for themselves. But as long as they can get a root system, they're fine. Uh, that's a chemical that's probably going to be banned in the next five years. But that's why we've lengthened our rotation and we grow the. Uh, mustard and uh, and radish crops to try and reduce the nematode numbers normally. Yeah. So we're we're doing both. On the front here, yep. we have a sprayer, a tank, that puts on stuff called... Vellum Prime. Vellum Prime, which we were just talking about and I'd already forgotten. That's the £1,500 for five litres. £1,500 litre can. for five litres, and it's a uh, fungicide. They found out that was... Uh, that's an interesting story about... Uh, Bananas, I was going to say, it was that the banana one? Yeah. yeah. They were using it on bananas as a fungicide on the bananas, and it found they found out it killed the nematodes in the, on the banana crops, which they must have a similar problem. So they're using it on here. No, they're using it as a fungicide, and we're using, using it as a pesticide. Does it? What does it say on the can? Does it say pesticide on? Does it say pesticide or is it say herbis? It won't be herb. It's a fungicide, surely. Yeah, it's fungus. It's just fungicide on the can. I'll have a look. There's the can. You two carry on talking. Yeah. So talk us through the rest of the planter. So we've got, yeah, so this dad is this is fertilizer, fertilizer tank. Fertilizer tank. So this, we, we put some on the top. We put some uh, Omex on as well, which is a suspension fertilizer. So you can put lots of uh, trace elements and things on with that. But this, um, this is just a, a, a compound fertilizer uh, of different things. And this, some of it is injected into the ground and some on the top gets mixed up on the back yeah and you guys use the 6170r all planting all the planting. That, that's your yeah, all the planting all the harvesting yeah yep and on the front here is we've normally got another shoe on the front and uh with a sprayer from a nozzle on there in front of the front of the shoe and one on the back to uh, put the vellum prime on and the planter the seed goes in the top funnels up we can, this tips up it's not a very good shot here. There's a, there's a conveyor belt here. Yeah. Feeds them all to the back with a sensor on there. That sensors when, sensors when there's no potatoes in there, and then shifts a few more along. And uh, and there are two belts. The belts going this way. Yeah. And that way, and that lines the potatoes up, and they will fall, drop down in here, just behind the opener. Yeah. And then they're covered up by the discs, and then there's a ridge of hood on the back. Um. So it's a it's a structural planter, but it's got a standing. Uh, ridge and upward on the back. The people we bought it from found that worked very well. You so guys we. obviously have a belt planter. Yeah. Have you ever used a cut planter? Yeah, and, yes? that's what we used to use nearly all the while, yeah. Yeah? These are good for chitted seed because they don't knock the chits off so much. 
Were you finding that a cut planter would sometimes bash them about a bit yeah, too much? It, it can be, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they've got better and better as they go along, but this is what we got. What from our friends up the road. So do you guys find that obviously with this the type of potato that you use this is just a bit gentler whereas are some some varieties a little bit more hardy well, for a cut planter yeah yeah but i mean well, some people don't worry about it because they uh, they don't chip the seed okay there's just as their eyes are open and so cut plant is fine yes it just depends on your system okay we like to chit ours because our land's cold yes we like to chit ours to give us similar best. advantage so we think that's probably nearly two weeks sooner than normal right okay unchitted seed the belt planter is also a lot easier to set up for odd shaped seed. Right. Big and seed, yes. Yeah, big seed, odd shaped seed. Yeah. Agri tend to be odd shaped compared to like a round fontaine sized potato. Marquise can be odd shaped. Odd Marquise or like, or like that. Which right. is the only, the, the only uh, varieties we know in that. Uh, with chitted seed, uh, with odd shaped seed, uh, these things just fly along. I was talking to Adam Speed Palmer. As well. yeah. I was talking to Adam Palmer the other day. <laughs> And they grade, they regrade all their seed anyway. <laughs> so they get their seed and then they regrade it. So their 35 50s are like 35, box of 35s and a box of 50s. Right. So then they can go like even faster with the planter. Yeah. Which makes perfect sense. Uh, it might be worth us trying to do that, but I don't know. I don't know whether it's, it'd be worth it for us, but they've got a thousand acres to cover, you know. So. Slightly different situation. Yeah, yep. slightly different situation. The Vellum Prime is an insecticide. Okay. So we're using it as an insecticide. So it's killing pests off for us, and the banana people are using it for a fungicide, so against disease control. Right. So we very to be corrected on that. We're, that's the story we've been told. We we understand it. Yes. Yeah. We, we, somebody don't, else. Don't may quote know more. us. Basically. Agronomist may know more. Yeah. So anyone wants to comment on that, then uh, please feel free. Yeah, but don't don't quote us that to be exact. No. But, but it um, seems to work for us. We don't. We we haven't used it on the black soil because the nematode pressure is not that high. Okay. Um, out here on the white, we know it's high anyway. So Can I just ask, what is the costs? Do you know the rough cost of like everything to do plant in? Like with all your um, Vellum Prime, all the seeds, fuel, would you know like a rough amount of how much it costs? Well, you have to have special wheels for the tractor there. If you bought them new, they're five, six grand a set. Blimey. A uh, new planter like this, I wouldn't like to think you would get much change from... 50 grand maybe right front tank on there was five or six seven grand something like that wouldn't it and both of them together probably the vellum prime was 1500 quid the seed was about 45 no 25 grand or something wouldn't it well it's it's about 500 odd pound a ton something like that yeah so uh and then we've had 40 yeah 45 yeah. tons so yeah yeah, so the amount of diesel I've used for this, uh, not a great deal. Probably 150 litres for, for 45 acres, which is, which is okay. Uh, your Basilea tractor probably used a whole one. tank, so 400 litres maybe, mm -hmm. and um, 80 litres of Ad Blue. Nemethorin we've used not quite 30 cans, have we? So that's 400 pound a can. So you don't use any more of that? Than you need to. Yeah, don't no. use any more of that than you need to. No, of course, yeah. Four hundred pound for twenty kilos. And again, that's where cover crops come in because you're obviously trying to use yeah. less chemicals. Yeah, it's, more, it's more of an insurance policy for us, really, at the moment. But the cover okay. crops, the cover crops, have now got an added advantage for us with the sheep mowing it down rather than us mowing it down. Rather than using any man-made chemicals or um, or diesel or anything trying to get it mowed down, mm -hmm. the, the sheep are coming in and mowing the mowing the crop. That's why we put a radish in there more than a mustard to uh, help the... The radish releases the gas to kill the nematodes when it wriggles through the soil and grows mm -hmm. and it draws them up from deeper. So yeah. we're just moving our cover crop uh, mixtures around a bit to suit the sheep more than anything and then the sheep poo out fertilizer. So every sheep for a month or so they reckon puts out 45 kilos of nitrogen. So yeah. they're on a winner with that aren't you? Yeah. Plus I haven't had to rotivate it, mow it incorporate it or anything like that so are you, are you off now i'm dogging all right can i get can i just get a picture dad before you go you live you. yeah of you too you can see you can see now for the weed pressure i've got coming through already look because i haven't plowed any of this normally we plow it and plowing you always say buries all the trash and stuff and then you have a clean start right and you don't tend to have too much weed pressure because you can see i've got weed pressure already and these have only been planted a few days or a week, 10 days. 
me and Cookie had a look on Tuesday and it's now Thursday and they had a massive root ball on them. And here's one, see if I can dig it out. And look, they have started poking their little shoots up towards the sky already, look. Yay. You see? Yep. You see that little knob in there? Yeah, yeah. Little nipple. See a little knob there as well. <laughs> <laughs> a really fat one. I'll stop being silly. As you can see, look, they put the roots out already. Yeah. That one's growing a bit and coming up towards the sky. That's not very, a very good one, really, but there you go. Me and Cookie have to make sure I plant it back up the right way. Night, night. Night, night. The other one we dug up the other day had got a massive root system on it already after 10 days, so that's great news for us. That means they're doing, really, their, they're doing their job. You can see how wet my soil is, look. Yeah. Normally, if it was dry, it would just all fall apart, but that is soaking wet. I wonder if I can squeeze some moisture out of that. No, it's not that wet. Look. Oh, look at that. Lovely, isn't it? And That's that shoot amazing. there, that shoot there will come round a potato yep. and just come straight out of the top. Oh, quick, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, like this time last year, I couldn't break the clods up. Uh, there was no moisture in the bottom there. When I went like that with the soil, yep. last year it all just fell apart. Is this a better place to be? It is than last year, yeah, much yeah. better place to be because they're, they're already providing, I mean, a lot of people don't want any rain because a lot of people haven't really got going yet. But if they come up and they get a real good rain on them, like an inch of rain and then like real muggy, wet conditions, yeah, they won't need to irrigate for another month, which means I can... Be less irritated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah be less irritated and um, I'm taking up golf now. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, is that yeah. after your concussion you'd like to yeah, change yeah, man? Yeah. I, I don't think drinking is my forte. Uh, but you have been saying that for the last 38 years. Yeah, I know, yeah. No. <laughs> not, I quite, mean, not quite. My but... nanny used to put brandy in my bowl. I so. think she did, yeah. yeah. It explains a lot to yeah. me. So, yeah, and no, I cracked my head at the weekend and then that Mrs. Mrs. Farmer's piling on piling on the pounds on her ass as well. So she's like, I'm not drinking anymore because I do real good at dieting during the week and then I put it all back on my ass. You should explain the picture, really. I had the most hilarious picture come through from Kaz. She uh, put on some jeans and then literally the seam right down her bum crack split. <laughs> it was the best. She's got a really good bum. I'm just going to put it out there. She's got a really good bum. So. Not bad for a fatty. I mean, if, it, if it's getting bigger, it, it, you know, it, it can only be a good thing, I'm sure. H asked on our YouTube channel, is the basilea like a rotavator in ireland they've never heard of them never heard of them before they're all six meter rotavators with the ridging bodies on the back so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. as you as you can see by how big our ridges are we don't use jumbo ridges because all jumbo ridges do for us they go down about that deep right all, all they do is bring up the pcm problem and then you don't end up with no crop at all and we don't need to deep stone so the the, the power vators and stuff like a big rotavator with rigid bodies on. Great uh, machine in there. They have their uses, but we don't need to smash our soil up that bad. Sorry, I've just got a wasp yeah, all, on me. All we need to do is break these clods <laughs> down a little I've bit. Got, I've got a wasp. Faffing around, will you? <laughs> it won't sting you unless you sting them. It got on me. I don't care. It's not going to hurt you, is it? It got on me. Right, ca sorry, carry on. No, we just need to break a few clods down. That's all we need to do. We just basically need to put the nematorin on is all we need to do, so. The basilea's just got hooks on it. Yep. Like the rotavator, but with loads of hooks, just to smash clods up. Really. Cousin Oliver tried it over the back here and got himself in a right old muddle because he's done just that, pulled all the PCM problem up. Yep. Um, as you can see, there's no stone to worry about. If we don't have any stone, you don't need to jumbo ridge and then separate all the stones out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, minimal effort. Um, I just wanted to say that Stephen Ross commented and he kind of called you out on your on your hilarious mumbo jumbo when you're talking when you said got a day of spraying that shouldn't take long probably about a day yeah. i just that that wasn't a question i just wanted to say that that was hilarious and thank you Stephen. so farmer fuller asks why have you cut down he said they have cut down by about 20 percent because of price and open market bottom gone yeah yeah no everyone's cutting down what's the point in growing a crop that nobody wants to buy and uh, nobody wants to pay for the chip shops have had it too good for too long and they've been spoilt with surplus potatoes so now they're actually having to pay a decent price for it it's a shame that they're actually having to pay more for gas and electric and potatoes and fish all at the same time but yeah. i know they work hard but we work hard and they're seeing all the profit from it so same with supermarkets farmer does all the work supermarket seems to earn all the profit out of it something's got to change otherwise all this just goes back to forest not forest it would just be a mess 
Yeah. Just being mess. So, well, yeah. I mean, Dad has always said that you guys would just never work with supermarkets, would you? No, no, no. If I had to deal with supermarkets, I'd give up. And the, and the, and the chip shops, some of the chip shops have turned like that. You know, oh, when's it going to be cheaper? When's it going to be cheaper? When you're paying like four quid a bag of spuds and you're earning 80 quid out of it. Yeah. <laughs> H said, do you have a forklift in each yard or do you move in between? Yeah, no, it's handy having them telehandlers. handlers uh, We have got another forklift, one forklift at the main farm, and then another forklift up at the other farm that we kind of share between a couple of farms. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, luckily enough, we've got two telehandlers, handlers but sometimes I could do with five. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes one's over there, the pig units. Hey, one of the motocross dads that rides on here in the wintertime. Yeah. Um, we got, sometimes I've got, a telehander at the pig unit, one here, and then I need one at another farm. Yeah. I need another one in the field at the same time. So, um, yeah, no, we're lucky enough to have, lucky enough to have, we kept our old telehander. So yeah. I'm going to give us nothing for it, so. Might as well keep it. It was still fine, it still works a treat, so. And then we don't really have many other questions other than that, but just, you know, people obviously letting us know how they're getting on with planting and bits and pieces. So yeah, be good to know how everyone else is getting on. I know uh, Mark Hop Hopkins, he's struggling. He hasn't got a potato in the ground. That's where he'd normally be finished planting by now. Yeah. Um, I texted him the other day and said, oh, I'm now dropping my planter off. And he's like, I haven't even put mine on yet. Yeah. Uh, down in Cornwall, they're real early down there. Normally they're March time, they're planting, finished finished by the end of March. Yeah. And um, here we are now at May and we're finished and they're, they're struggling like mad down there. So when I came out here last night, all these rows were all full of water. Right. All these lines were full of water. So if I, uh, they're getting the same rain I am, mine's free draining land, theirs isn't. Yep. Theirs has to run off. Theirs which, has to run off because it won't soak through. Which takes time. Which takes time. Yeah. Uh, if they have an inch of rain, they'll be put back a week or so. And yeah, um, my heart goes out to them a little bit because they're struggling. Uh, we struggled the other year. Remember harvest in 2018, it just didn't stop raining. Uh, I went across the road to try and get a load of potatoes and it rained, so I came back again. Yeah. Went over to the furthest away field we've got to get a load and it rained. I ended up with four tractors and trailers ditched over there and mum came and got me and Grumpy Granddad because we just couldn't get any up. No climate change, any, it's a na nature, isn't it? Yeah. Some one year is going to be wet, one year is going to be dry, so. Can I just ask a question? Why is it with farming? The, the prices vary so much because obviously I know you guys sold your pri your potatoes at a certain price just before Christmas and in January time yeah. but obviously now they've now they've skyrocketed yeah. why is that because there's no other job you wouldn't go into Tesco's and one day the bananas are 2p and the next minute they're like 55p do you know what I mean there's a really simple answer to that what do, what do you think it is well I, I mean I really don't know but I feel like it's really unfair because it's, because it's all what about supply and demand because if yeah. there's a massive su supply, which there has been of potatoes for the last 15 years, if if uh, the chip shops say, oh no, we ain't paying that, they can, people can go and get them from Holland and, and uh, Belgium and stuff like that. So they, it's a really simple, now that now the, the continent has had a really disastrous year with the 40 degree heat, unirrigated stuff is just fried in the field with no yield, no quality. And we've all had pretty good record yields around this area because we can irrigate. That's as simple as it is, as it is really. There's no, there's no supply. There's massive demand now and no supply. Yeah. So potato prices are finally going up. But uh, if everyone jumps on the bandwagon and goes, well, I want to put 200 acres extra in, price comes down again, doesn't it? So It just feels really like very odd. Yeah, yeah there's I, no other you know. business in the world where you'd go, oh, I'll pay for them in six months' time. Or in six months' time, they could be half the price they are now. But why don't farmers have the ability to say, well, I'm not paying that for fertiliser because I'm not getting the price? Because the supermarkets and stuff have had too much a good, uh, too, too big a buying power. That's all it boils down to, too big a buying power. Will it always be this way? Yeah, I pretty much, unless somebody from government steps in and, and decides that there's going to be a, a, a marketing board again like there was years ago, you know. Um, potatoes are going to be X price off farm or... Don't buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supermarkets, you are going to pay X amount for milk, X amount for beef, lamb, pork, chicken. Eggs. And, and the grain yeah. buyers are going to pay X amount for their grain off farm. It's going to be this price or you don't have it. And we're going to stop importing stuff until we've used up all of our own stocks and we're going to stick by our British farmers rather than importing from countries that not red tractor affiliated 
Yeah. Uh, they have no quality standards and like the sugar cane coming in from Brazil. The chopping down rainforest, which is the lungs of the planet, to bring us sugar. When we and, have it here. And beef. When we have it here. Yeah, we have it here. All right. This, this would have all been marshland, so it would have been a little bit of forest, but mostly marshes and reeds and stuff. Over Fetford would have been all my all Fet, all Fetford would have been forest. Yeah. Um, like the Brecklands would have all been forests and and ferns and stuff. They're not really they're not really consuming much, not really pumping out much oxygen for us to breathe. So in Brazil they are. Is it an, another thing again, a bit off topic? But was it CIPC where you, is it that the stuff that you can't use anymore for fog like for yeah, the fogging? Yeah, so just pressing However, on potatoes. However, yeah. like we're we're obviously not allowed to use <coughs> that, but they are still allowed to use it abroad, and we're still allowed to import stuff that are using it. Yeah. But we're not allowed to use yeah. it. Yeah. Which. I mean, not not Here that. Here you go, figure. Yeah, not that I want to get into too much detail about this, no, but this it, it just started. baffles me. There's so many things. Like in the summer, I could go get my car cleaned, yeah. but you can't irrigate your field because you're restricted to growing food. But yeah. it, like, I, I don't really. get it. Like, and I don't want to obviously go off on a rant or off on a tangent. Anna's had her first rant. Oh my god! I'm like, it just, hey. it just, it really irritates <clears throat> me. The stupid thing is as well, right, we asked someone in the uh, Environment Agency or DEFRA or someone like that, and uh, and he said they're not allowed to stop washing cars because that's their business. I'm like... Hello! Uh, hello! Their biggest problem is they're more worried about climate change than they are about growing food and looking after the environment. So uh, I'm going to run for um, a politician then, I think. Well, this is why we started. <laughs> this is why we started the YouTube channel. It is, so get yeah. behind us, folks, and um, Anna and Daniel for president. <laughs> Should we go and show you the Basilea quickly? Let's do that. Yep. So we are at the Basilea. Yep. Uh, obviously, we've got a tank, a, a technique tank. Like we've got a technique tank on the front for the fertilizer. Mhm. Mm Grumpy Granddad puts all in his uh, clobber on and stuff, and um, tips the nematorin in. And then there's a, a metering unit in there set mm -hmm. to a certain. Um, amount and then a fan blows it out of these these ducts it's as simple as that really and then the, the hook tines under here it is just like a rotavator we've got a rotavator behind us so we're going to have a look at that instead of the rotavator blades we've got a, a hook and yeah. all the hook does is just um, smashes up the tines up uh, the clod sorry on our black soils and stuff we get a bow wave because it's fluffing it up so much right that you end up and it's throwing it over and then you end up with a bit of a bow wave here Right. So we have to just adjust the back of the machine up and out of the ground a little bit to let the soil out. Mm -hmm. If we get a bow wave, it tends to mix the nematorin in very odd. You end up with a, uh, stripes of it. Right. So instead of being all the way through the soil, it's, it's like there, there, there and there. Yeah. Which is no good for us. So, yeah, we just have to keep an eye on whether or not we've got a bow wave going on in the right. soil because it's yeah. so fluffy. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is all the Basilea is basically. It's just a rotavator with a hook tine on it rather mm -hmm. than a curved blade. Um, we haven't got anything that needs smashing up that hard. We haven't got anything that cloddy, you know? Yeah. Some people ridge theirs up over winter so the frost breaks the clods down. We don't need to worry about that. Nah. So this year's been perfect. With a bit of moisture in the ground, clods have been breaking up a treat. So it's been awesome. So yeah, this is all the Basilea is. I mean, if you haven't heard of one in Ireland, that's probably because they don't use them in Ireland. Just different different land. Yeah, I'll show you what they probably do use. So, all right, cool. This is the Basilea, signing out. Wait. I don't know if you can get in there to have a look at it. I don't know that I can get in there to have a look at it either. I think you need to have a tidy up, dude. <laughs> there you go, there's a rotavator blade. Yeah, that's a big rotavator blade, look. Big curved yep. blade. Just chops up any uh, trash and we use it for chopping up mustard and stuff, but we just don't need it. We just don't need a big heavy blade like that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we really appreciate everyone subscribing. It helps motivate us going forward. If you want to help us a little bit more, we've got hats and hoodies and stuff out there. Now on our Spotify. Shopify. Uh, Shopify. Shopify. Sorry. Spotify's the music, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, no yeah. Worries, yeah. It's all, all linked in with YouTube now. If you've got a YouTube account, you can just get on there and... Um, go buy some bits. Go buy some bits, Woo yeah. I do need to say happy birthday to Greg King. If you want a shout out and you want a bir birthday mention, get him a little super thanks or go and buy a hoodie and we'll give you a little shout out. So happy birthday, Greg. Happy birthday, Greg. Woo-hoo. Videos for you. Cheers, yeah. mate. Cheers, Bye. guys. Bye.